welcome back. Hope you're staying warm and out of the snow. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about, we're going to begin a brand new module, Module 7. Um, and Module 7, Lesson 1 is on Manifest Destiny. And so we're moving out of early, early, early years of America, the 1820s, 30s, 40s, and we're getting into uh, the later 40s, 50s, up into what is known as the antebellum period, which is the period leading up to the Civil War. And this module goes, uh, we'll begin to identify some of the early factors leading toward the Civil War. And, but today is all about westward expansion and manifest destiny. So let's, let's take a look at it. Okay, so by the 1840s, our country was almost twice its original size. Um, it, our population had literally grown six times to what it was during the American Revolution. And it seemed our growth and expansion would, would never stop. And many Americans assumed the United States would be a dominion from coast to coast, from Atlantic Ocean to Pacific Ocean. It hadn't done it yet, but many Americans thought that it would. So um, Thomas Jefferson, he wanted the United States to become an empire for liberty. And he does this, obviously, when he purchases Louis, the Louisiana Territory from France. And he doubled our nation's size. And for a quarter century, our, no, our numbers, you know, Americans explored this huge territory a little bit. Um, but many Americans believed that our westward movement uh, and southward movement was something that was ordained by God. It was intended by God. And the term to identify God's intention for America to be a coast-to-coast -coast nation is called manifest destiny. So that's just the American belief that it was our, it was going to happen, that America would be a Atlantic Ocean to Pacific Ocean, a continental nation, and many Americans believe that it was that it was obvious, that it was manifest, that it was going to happen. So, why would people want this? Why are people moving westward? What's what's even what's the what's the benefit? And a lot of Americans had some practical reasons for doing this. You know, they wanted obviously economic opportunity, and you can see, you know, by the by the portrait painted here, you, know, you have people willing to work. You know, he's got his pickaxe and his shovel. They're, and they're, if you look at this, they're moving westward. No, it's left, but that's the idea here. We're moving westward. You know, and this is Lady Liberty, and she's stringing the, the telegraph lines, showing the spread of American technology and the Conestoga wagons. And you kind of see these people here being chased away into the dark. Those are Native Americans. So you can kind of see, um, you know, but it, this is, you know, it's a very pro-American thing. They leave, put the American, Native Americans in the dark over here where it's stormy and cloudy, and we're going to bring trains and telegraph and steamboats and build canals and do agriculture and have, have manufacturing and it's all bright and sunny over here and we're going to enlighten this area all right so there's a lot a lot of a lot of uh allegory and symbolism going on in this in this this portrait but you know americans were seeking you know lumbering trapping mining they wished to capitalize on the abundant forests and mineral resources of the west so, and a lot of people will needed a fresh start after the panic of 1837. And the abundance of the land of the West was a very great attraction. Um, whether it be, whether you be a farmer or a land speculator or, you know, whatever, land ownership was an important step toward prosperity. So, Americans had a lot of very practical reasons to want to move out West. But as you know, there are people already inhabiting this area, and most Native Americans tried to maintain their strong cultural traditions, even if they were originally forced from their ancestral lands uh, by the Indian Removal Act in 1830. And, you know, by, by the late 1830s, growing numbers of white settlers west of the Mississippi River and um, had pushed Native Americans continually west. So... You know, and, and many states were 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 taking action against these these Native Americans, uh, even calling up like the National Guard, the, the militia, to remove Indians from even future from further land. So, 
you know, this really convinces many Native Americans to to fight back. And one such group was called the Black Hawk, and they wanted to reclaim their land. And so they started the Black Hawk War against the state of Illinois and eventually spreads into the Wisconsin Territory. Um, it doesn't end well for them, as in many once again they are defeated and then forcibly removed to areas even further west. So it, it's difficult to try to find some some na some more center ground, okay? And, and as settlers continue to move into the west, and smaller numbers small numbers of displaced Native Americans fighting against them, the United States government wanted to step in and try to appease the settlers' fears of attack by calling for a conference at, at a place what is now known as Fort, uh, Fort Laramie, um, or Laramie, Wyoming. Uh, here, many Native American tribes, including the Arapaho, the Sioux, the Cheyenne, and others, joined with American representatives, delegates, to swear a good faith, maintain good faith and friendship, and to, to have an effective and lasting peace. Now, this, this happens in 1851, and this treaty of Fort Laramie provided Native Americans with more with some some control of the Central Plains. That is land that is east of the Rocky Mountains that stretches from the Arkansas River north to Canada. And in return for this land, which is supposedly going to be guaranteed to them, that um, you know they would promise not to attack settlers, and they would allow for the government of the United States to build roads and forts bridges, whatever they needed, and the government pledged to honor these, these agreed-upon boundaries and make annual payments to the Native Americans. Well, if, if the history has, has shown anything, um, America is not known for holding up its end of the bargain with Native Americans, and as more and more settlers increasingly moved into these lands, the traditional Native American hunting lands were depleted of buffalo and elk and other wild game. And the United States government repeatedly violated the terms of the treaty, which is terrible and wrong, and subsequent treaties eventually demanded that Native Americans completely abandon their land and move on to reservations. So, you know, it's, it's tragic and it's terrible. Good morning, teachers. Those of you who have Hannah Cole, um, her classes are still not showing in Schoology. If you would send her an email inviting her or send her an email letting her know what work needs to be accomplished, um, she just cannot see your classes yet. Thank you. Okay, so, so we're talking about why people want to get there and some of the implications of people moving to the West, but how are they going to get there? And a series of trails are responsible for for the for westward movement, one of the busiest and most well-known trails was the Santa Fe Trail. It was about 780 miles. It started in Independence, Missouri, and traveled all the way western and south to what is today Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, you know, people tr loaded their covered wagons with all their supplies, cloth, knives, guns, and set off for Santa Fe. And many people would band together into groups of hundreds of wagons to fight off uh, raiding uh, Comanche and Kiowa Indian tribes, uh, basically you know, creating a wagon train where they would link together their, their train, their, their wagons into, into a long, long line, and then at night they would circle the wagons into a corral for the horses, mules, and ox to protect them. Um, you know, after you know, many, many of the traders have found great success there. Uh, another one that's pretty famous is the Oregon Trail. This used to be a, a famous video game when I was a kid, but you guys probably wouldn't find it very entertaining now. But um, this was actually blazed by Methodist missionaries as they were you know, trying to set up schools to convert Native Americans to Christianity and educate them. And they did this by driving, driving their wagons as far into to Fort Boise, which is in Idaho, and basically they proved that the wagons could travel on the Oregon Trail, which also started in Independence, Missouri, and went traveled all the way to Oregon City, Oregon, very, 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 very close to the Pacific Ocean. Um, today it's like Portland, Oregon, in the Willamette Valley, and um, this is a route that really 
Lewis and Clark had traveled. It's one of the very, it's very similar trails. It follows, follows the river all the way, uh, into, to the Pacific. Um, you know, and it was not, not an easy trek. Uh, most people walked or in, and pushed carts as they did, carrying their very few possessions that they had. The trip took months. I mean, you're crossing literally the Rocky Mountains, the tallest mountains in North America. Uh, you know, fever, diarrhea, cholera uh, were, were deadly to many travelers as they had, you know, no clean drinking water to speak of. Um, but they traveled tried to travel in large groups to provide protection against potential Native American attacks, but, you know, they also traveled in groups to try to combat the loneliness of the difficult journey. And not everybody had great success. Some people were stranded in the mountains and ended up having even even worse luck and running out of food entirely, which caused a whole new set of problems for them, as one group known as the Donner Party found out. Uh, another group... Uh, this is a religious group, and they're called the Mormons. Now, this group migrated westward along the Oregon Trail, and they are basically a religious community. Now, the actual name of the Mormon faith, people that are, uh, is the actual name of the faith is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. They're called Mormons for short because of an additional book to the New Testament that they believe in called the Book of Mormon. So, uh, the Mormons were, they, they actually began in western New York, up here at a place called Fayette, New York, uh, in 1830 when John Smith and some of his associates um, created the faith. And John Smith is the actual founder. Uh, he, he creates the Mormon faith when he's visited by an angel who gives him a set of magical glasses and allows him to interpret some golden tablets that he found in a mountain. In, in New York, where his, on them are written Egyptian hieroglyphics, and Joseph Smith was instructed that those tablets were left there by Jesus, and, and he can read these tablets and then interpret them and then write them into a book called the Book of Mormon. And so he wants to spread his, spread his new faith, and he began, but obviously, you know, he met a great amount of resistance by the people who were already there. And many, the Mormons faced persecution. Hence why they no longer reside in New York, but they are at the, the Great Salt Lake in Utah. They're continually pushed westward, facing persecution the entire way. Joseph Smith himself was even murdered while he's imprisoned uh, in Nauvoo. So um, Smith's successor is a man by the name of Brigham Young. And Brigham Young moves the Mormons all the way to the Great Salt Lake, uh, where they made the you know, made the desert bloom out of the out of the, the the lake of salt, which is really a testament to the work ethic of uh, of the Mormon people. So, um, but you know, the the Mormons did things a little differently, and that's why they uh, faced such persecution from Americans along the way. But today, the Mormons are a very strong church, and they're located in Salt Lake City, Utah. And um, it is a global religion. There are Mormons all over the world. But it is a true American faith. It began in New York and is headquartered in Utah today. Um, Brigham Young. Okay. So other, other problems with some territorial disputes. Um, basically, during the presidency of James K. Polk, he, he ran on the... The claim that hey we're gonna this is the Oregon Territory, and it was under the Secretary of State John Quincy Adams. This was you know in like the 1820s. This was settled as territory that is going to be shared between the United States and Great Britain. But as time went on and our manifest destiny takes hold, we want it all. Okay, Americans want it all. And James K. Polk is one of the great American expansionists at any cost. And his campaign slogan when he ran for president is 5440, this line of latitude right here, or fight, meaning we will go to war with the British if we do not get all this land. That was his, that was his slogan. However, during his presidency, though, he's willing to settle for this line of latitude, the 49th parallel, which is the current border between the United States and Canada today. So this, this actually comes to fruition in the Oregon Treaty of 1846. 
And the treaty basically extends the, the mainland boundary with Canada along this 49th parallel westward from the Rocky Mountains all the way to the Pacific Ocean to what is now, what is, this is Puget Sound, like uh, near S Seattle, uh, Washington. And this establishes our current United States boundary. So as you know, you know, we talked about Mexico it will not be so easy to establish a south, southern boundary between the United States and Mexico as that will require, well, it doesn't require, but it does result in war. And that's what we're going to look at uh, the next time we are together, we're doing notes, is uh, exp American expansion into Texas, um, our relations with Antonio Lopez Santa Ana, and how Texas does not not just become a state, how Texas becomes its own country, the Republic of Texas, and how Manifest Destiny plays into our relations with them. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, make sure you, you, you just shoot me your question through Schoology or you can call the school, whatever you need. I'm here for you, and I hope to see you guys soon. Take care.